little bourbon lover find love for scotch whiskey? You're about to find out. Let's get right on into it. What's going on, everybody? Nathan here with the Everyday Drinker, bringing you guys a brand new episode. Today, we are diving deep into a different kind of whiskey, one that I really haven't gotten much into. I've had a couple of pours here and there of a couple different styles, but never really sat down and tried to find different things about them. That whiskey of choice today is going to be Scotch Whiskey. We have a little box here that has three different styles of scotches from all over the country, and we're going to see which one of these is my favorite. Let's get right on to the box. So, on the box, we have, I will botch these names up, and I apologize to all of my scotch viewers out there, but I, I'm going to try my best. On my right, your left, first bottle here is Coil Isla. Now this is going to be a 12 year age stated Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey sitting right at 86 proof. Second bottle here is going to be Clen Elish 14 year. Now this one is a single malt Scotch Whiskey aged 14 years, distilled and bottled in Scotland. And bottle number three is going to be Talisker Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. So that's what's in the box and we're just gonna pour them out and dive right in. I'd say this is a nice gift box for somebody who hasn't tried something yet and they're interested in. I got this for $45 and I've seen it at many different liquor stores and these are all brand name scotches, you know, and I mean, I'm super stoked to try this. I never really dove deep into scotch and this is something that I'm really excited for. So bottle number one here. So we've got bottle one, the Coil Isla. That's going to go on the right hand side here. The Clen Elish is gonna go in the center and the Talisker is gonna go on my left, your right. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna start on our right at Coil Isla. Now what's really cool is it has this little graph on the back of the box wrapping. So Coil Isla is going to be, this is going to be very light and smoky. We're gonna find out if that's true. So. Isla Scotches, I've had a couple of pours of those, and to me, they smell and taste like finger paint. We're gonna see if I can find anything different on this one. Finger paint, finger paint, finger paint, finger paint. Maybe a little bit of lemon. It's so difficult to get past that finger paint though. Let me know down in the comments if you find that in Isla Scotches. Maybe I'm finding a little bit of honey, a little bit of like a dry smoke maybe as well. Smells like the sea, smells like the ocean. Man, that, that finger paint though, it it takes over everything. It's so difficult to get past. I got like a burst of citrus too there. I'm gonna do this. Lemongrass, a little bit of like a oak. Yeah, like a dry wood. Let's get into the palette here and see what we can find on this bad boy. Hopefully it's not just finger paint. Super light, super light, wow. I get that finger paint on the palette, I really do. Tastes like cleaner, but I'm getting a grass note, like a soft, fresh cut grass, a light honey. And there's a subtle sweetness to that, subtle, not strong whatsoever. Subtle, 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 super light, like just like the box said, Super light, but that smoke is there. That's what I'm getting. Let's go to the middle one here, which I believe is the Clin, Clin, uh, Clin Elish 14 year. Now, let's look at the graph and see what they say about Clin Elish 14 year. Clin Elish is going to be delicate and rich. Let's see what this bad boy is all about. All right, middle guy. All of these are the same color, except for the Koi Isla. That's very, very light, but Let's see what the nose of the Clint Elish is all about. Ooh, flowery, floral, very, 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 very floral. Getting a slight sweetness off of there. Pleasant, pleasant compared to that. Very pleasant, no finger paint in the Glen Elish. Getting a nice honey, sweet honey, like a dark, fresh honey. A little bit of like a, a lemon orange. Maybe a little bit of like a uh, confectioner sugar. Butter in there, a little dark brown butter, a little bit of bread. 
It's opening up like a nice, fresh, baked, buttery biscuit. Mm. All right, let's get into the palate. Cheers, guys. Wow, that's super pleasant. That is pleasant. Nice, thick mouthfeel. Coach the palate. Lingering finish. I get first sip. I got a little bit of like a ginger almost, like that bite from the ginger. And then it went down nice and smooth, finishing off with a little bit of like a, uh, a honey syrup. And then tail end, a little citrus, like a little bit of lemon zest in there. Really, really nice. That's super nice. Almost like a, um, an ethanol almost, or sorry, not ethanol, menthol, where it's like a minty feeling in my mouth right now where it's cooled off almost, but my tongue is tingly. Really strange, really, really strange. That's my favorite out of the two so far. I could actually tolerate that. Now we're on to Talisker. We are on to the Talisker and I've heard many, many things about Talisker. Am I excited? No. Am I really though? Maybe just a little bit to just see what it's all about. This is the 10 year, I believe. Yeah, it's the Talisker 10 year. Nice honey color on there. Let's get into the nose. Okay, not as finger painty as I was expecting. A little bit more smoke on there, like a nice charred smoke. Kind of turning my stomach though. Not sure. Not quite sure. Got a little bit of finger paint there. A little peaty. Man, it's... I don't know how to get past the finger paint. I really don't. It's something that is unique in a way, I guess you could say. It's very, very unique. First, right back there, I got a little peach. That was a little weird. I wasn't expecting something sweet like that. Finding that peach still. A nice peach. Maybe a little bread in there as well. Like maybe, I don't want to go as far to say a peach cobbler. Because I'm really, I'm really not finding that. Trying to find some more, but I really can't. Let's dive in and see if the palette changes a little bit. Okay, not as bad as the Koi Isla. Talisker was a little bit more rounded off. Went down a little smoother. Not, not a long finish. A little salty almost. A little smoky. I'm going to go back in for another sip here. A little bit of that lingering finger paint taste, but not as bad as the Koi Isla. Talisker had a little bit more of like a citrus punch, but then it tailed off into that smokiness, like smoke right on the tongue. Like you, you smoked this literally and you drank it like a smoked old fashioned where you get that burn, but it's not like a, a alcohol burn, but it, it tastes burnt. That's what this guy has. If you guys have a favorite scotch, let me know what it is. I've had Glen Morangy, enjoy it. I've had Highland Park 12, I've enjoyed it. These are three that I have never had, and I'm not going to say that I'm not enjoying them. I'm not going to say that I am enjoying them. I would probably say I've enjoyed these two over here more than I've enjoyed this one. In the comments down below, let me know if I should be how I should go around that finger paint and see what I should find different. So, Clint Ellis number one, Talisker number two, Koi Isla number three. If you guys have these and you're fans of those, let me know down in the comments below what you find in your notes, in your tasting notes, in your um, nosing notes. What do you find in these that I didn't find? So, like I said, this is the really first time that I really dove into different types of scotches, and this was very interesting. I enjoyed it a lot. If you guys are brand spanking new, make sure you leave a comment, subscribe, and like the video. We are super, super close to 500 subscribers, and I would love to hit it soon because we are doing a 500 subscriber giveaway. Until next time, guys, this has been Nathan with The Everyday Drinker. Cheers.